All right. Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back on this lovely Tuesday. How's everybody doing, Cyber Traders? Good morning. Good to see you all. Good to see everybody on YouTube. So yesterday um, was Monday and you know, we don't know coming back from a weekend. It's not always the craziest days, but we did have a couple of good stocks that did make some good moves. We had this AMC. We had the BCDA. We had the Ruby. That thing was unbelievable. We had a couple of good stocks, which was quite shocking. So we'll talk about uh, we'll, we'll talk a little about it. But let me just get right to the point. Look at this stock right here. This poor, poor AIV. Oh, God, down 85 percent. You know. Everybody always discriminates against cheap stocks. They're like, and I always tell them, listen, you know what the difference between a $5 stock and a $40 stock is this can still go down 40 more points. Now imagine waking up in the morning and seeing you waking up and you thought you're going to ready cash in that stock. And you're like, oh, you know, I had a great run, ran from 25 to 42. Today's the day. And like, mm, you know what? It's at 41 today. Tomorrow I'll sell it. Okay. Go do your thing in a day and whatever. And you came up next morning like, mm, now it's like 40, okay? Why is it going down? Well, if you were a day trader, you probably would see the writing on the wall because it kept dumping it. And then you wake up the next day like, okay, tomorrow's definitely it because it's closing at 30. Well, guess what? You just woke up at $6, okay? So who said trading is not dangerous, all right? So that's why... You can't put all your eggs in one basket, and that's why you got to be very careful. You have to understand how to play the game. People say day trading is more risky. No, swing trading is more risky because, you know what? People thought there was a great company, great stock. You know what? Didn't work too well. By the way, if my mind is correct, I don't know what this company does. I'm going to find out. But from the sound of it, apartment investments, is that is that right, everybody? Is that is that basically what we're looking at? apartment investment and management is that what this company does because if that's what i think that this company is i don't know where we were not shorting it earlier because see what's going on with everything that's going on here in new york city they said new york city um real estate is at the lowest since 9 11 okay and now these politicians are having this conversation because we're so in debt and, oh, they're moving like crazy. Everyone's out of here. And not even that, but the banks, the people that – this is the financial capital of the world. The banks, now what they're doing here is they're talking about they have to raise taxes on the wealthy because they don't have any more – You know, they need the money You know, because we're so in debt with COVID and everything else. I could tell you this. A lot of people – it says 750,000 people just moved out of Manhattan already. So you can imagine it's only going to get worse, you know? So somebody's going to, something's going to have to give plus with technology working from home. It's just awesome. You know, some people don't realize it, but you might take a pay cut, but you actually make more money working from home. You know, like, cause I have to pay for travel, food, lunch, everything. It's just better, you know? And I think that's, that's probably the bad thing that's going to come out. What's going on with COVID, not just, you know, obviously the virus and everything, but it really made us learn how to change the way we think. There's going to be some big changes going on. Anyway, a couple of news, Collins. Uh, looks like peeled off some of the business created two public companies. There's a lot of stocks out there. RE Estimate Investment Trust is one uh, one tick pony. Rent and uh, rent to state inflation. I would stay far, far away from that. You know, far away from that. But you know what? I was just in Manhattan just about a week ago. And they're building the West Side. I mean, they're still building these great apartment complex. So, I mean, I guess they already have the money already there. But uh, but anyway, let's get back to trading anyway. All aboard. You got to remember, and I say this all the time, catastrophes, unfortunately, make opportunities. Okay. Um, I remember Hurricane Sandy. And some of you, if you don't live here in New York, you probably heard about it because it closed down New York City. For a very long time, there was this one area around here. It's called Long Beach. They were under 15 feet of water. And everyone's like, I'm not going back there. Ridiculous. You could have bought a piece of property for for $50,000. Today, it's worth about a half a million. Okay. It's just, that's what ends up happening. You know, you got to look at it as traders. Obviously, people in real estate, real estate, real estate, and let's just say location, location, location. Well, in trading, you know what? I'm telling I'm going to keep an eye on this IEV. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of a bounce. So that one is definitely on our watch list. But there are a couple of stocks I want to talk about yesterday. I want to bring up some of the stocks that we traded. Uh, the BCDA was just 
an animal yesterday. Look at the long-term chart. Stock went from $3 to $7 yesterday. And she was just an awesome, awesome stock. A lot of us did really well on it. Let me bring a, a, a chart right here. You can see a little bit longer on that chart. That one did well. AMC, I traded that yesterday. I don't know what happened. It would talk about, you know, a hostile takeover and the stock got hammered. It went from 410 all the way to three bucks. What was nice about this trade, and you guys remember this, there was like a 400,000 iceberg order at $3. Now, I lost money on this trade, but I bought it back. And then I lost money again. I sold it. I had the stock all the way when it did that little shake right around 350. Then I got out around like 340. Then I bought it back at 320. And then I bought it. And then I said, you know what? I just kept doubling down. You know, and and tripling down. I says, you know, what? it's going to bounce eventually. You saw it happening, and then sure enough, I did really well on the bounce. I ended up paying more for it. It was a fun stock to trade. I did really well with the AMC, so that one did really well. Ruby was also, I mean, this thing was just ridiculous. This thing just ran from like seven dollars all the way to fourteen. The only bad thing about it, it was, you know, it was like a level four, a category four stock. It was really, really volatile, a big spread. Pretty dangerous. And you could see exactly what happened from 14 all the way back down to eight. So we saw these stocks get halted and it was just, it was just a, all over the place. We're going to do some shopping right now. We're going to check out a couple of more stocks. There's a couple of good ones I want to keep on our watch list. I want to start off with the A list before we go to the B list. So I'm going to keep an eye on the stock. Listen, I'm a, I'm a fan of bottom fishing. Okay. Um, bottom fishing basically means when stock get hammered like this, go from 40 down to $6. These are things that I kind of look at. So I want to keep a close eye on something like this. You might get these people average down, whatever it is. Doesn't mean it's a long-term effect. I want to keep a close eye on that. And everybody remembers this one. This one was like off the charts, right? This thing was ridiculous. This stock ran from like $20 all the way to about $160 in one effing day. <laughs> one day. Couldn't believe it. But it was a short squeeze. It was a short squeeze. And you could see it went right back down to 40 bucks. But anyway, she started to creep up a little bit there. She is a category five stock. So you got to be advanced, you got to be a little bit more an advanced trade. You could see it's already trading with like an 80 cent spread. Okay. So, and everyone's got tier size of 100. So, unless you're one of the advanced traders here at Cyber Trade University, you might want to stay away from it. But I'm going to keep an eye on this one. This looks like a fun one. We have BERU is another one that's moving pretty nicely. Now, this has been fun for a while, for a couple of days. So you can see it ran from three to four. Then went from five to seven, and then it went us up to up to twelve. If you look over the course of the day, though, she seems like she's just kind of gapping up. Go check your journals. Remember, this is one of the biggest things we teach you at Cybertrain University. You have to learn and write good journals down, and because you're gonna trade these stocks again, and you want to remember: Did you make money? Did you lose money? Was the stock too volatile? Did they do some nasty shakes? Did they do some halts? You know, all these things. Being a trader. It's the same thing like I talk about being a doctor. You know, one of the doctors that, you know, what they always say, I'm always, what do you do? Oh, I'm practicing medicine. What does that really mean? Because they're always practicing. Okay. Even the guy's been there for 20 years. Any doctors out there, you know what I mean? Oh, he's practicing medicine. Because you learn every day. Traders, we're always practicing. We're always learning something new. And the only way you learn is from your mistakes. All right. So that one, we're going to keep an eye on that one too. And also this one's gapped up pretty nicely. This OCX. Got a nice spread. You could trade a lot of shares. Not really seeing too much algorithms going on level three right here. But and she is kind of a little bit all over the place. Let me just change this chart so you, say, so you can see a little bit better. But she's kind of gapped up. She's starting to make a little bit of lower lows. I want to see how she trades going into the open. Now we got the B list. Don't discourage the B list because sometimes we always see it pop up. I'm seeing this stock PRVL. It's up about 85% right away without even looking at it and looking at the chart. I could assume it's a buyout. So I'm going to scratch this bad boy out. I always like to show you that because some people are like, oh, look, the stock is up so much. Why is it up? Usually it's a buyout. Makes resistance levels, okay? Because we don't teach resistance, okay? We teach you buyers and sellers. Resistances are made from sellers. If you don't know how to find the seller, then you don't know how to trade resistance, okay? Just please keep that in mind. And people keep looking at that. They're like, oh, what's the resistance? Uh, the resistance means nothing to me. What I'm looking for is the sellers, okay? Always remember that. Then you could say, oh, then that's a resistance. You're doing it backwards. BTWN, another one. Kind of flat, not really moving too much, but she's up 23%. 3.5 million shares already trading pre-market. Not seeing too many iceberg orders on the right. So that's why I threw it on the B list. But like I said, we always see these things 
they might jump out of nowhere and just go and become, you know, from a B list or a C list to an A list. AVXL, another stock trending down, down 15%, 2.4 million shares traded. Uh, not really any big iceberg orders out there. Decent spread. I'll probably give it a category two or three as of right now. Penny stock, though. Mm, probably even throw it on a C list, I'll be honest with you. Throw it on a C list. All right. That's basically what we're looking at. A couple of things out there. Uh, Neil says NVAX is supposed to have the next vaccine available after Johnson & Johnson. NVAX, it's not really going anywhere. I know NVAX was a fun stock that we traded, Neil, but you could see it. I don't know. Rumors really not out there. I think everyone came out with it. was coming out with their vaccine. I know they're talking a lot about it right now. MRNA. Listen, buy on rumor, sell on news. Okay. That really comes down to it. Until these companies actually report earnings, then, you know, then we'll go from there. But we know they had the vaccine. MRNA was a phenomenal run up. Uh, even in November was seventy dollars. Look at thing ran a hundred bucks. So you know it's a gamble. You know people like look at it where okay, which one's got the better or the more popular one? We saw what happened with Pfizer. You know. So anyway, people are starting to take it. I would be a little concerned because we don't know what the what the not only the long term effect is, but I don't know if you guys ever took the flu shot. You might see some side effects coming in now. Now it's because we fast tracked it. You know, we'll see how it works out. So we got to keep it. We got we have to see what's going on with that. I N O yes was another one, and you know, listen, good example. Stock was all the way up to thirty five dollars. Boom, the thing just tanked. All right, all right, guys. Listen, the market's going to be open up in fifteen minutes. I want you guys to get ready so you can fill up your coffees, hit the restroom, so we get ready to go. If you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook Live, or you're watching this recording, remember just look on the bottom, click us, like us. You could always do a trial for nine dollars and join the trading room for a week and see what it's all about and see if it's for you. So you can get, you could sit there and enjoy enjoy it for a whole day, all day long. And then also, don't forget. Cyber traders today, traders talk. Josh is going to be doing at 11 o'clock. So at Tuesday's always our pop, most popular event here at the cyber group. Everyone should be done by then. And I'll see you back here at 2.30. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading and be safe.